I just wanted to make sure that you listeners are listening to the Drape Domaniac podcast on doiamedia.com. You are, right? Peace, family, and welcome to this early morning edition of the Drake Doe Maniac Podcast. This is Ayapo Yapa, the HDIC, that is the head Drake Doe Maniac in charge. And my beautiful wife, Angela, is presently in bed, sleeping the sleep of the righteous. Uh, it's about 4.30 in the morning where I am, and um, this is, in a way, a test uh, on the last podcast we had a lot of noise in the background, a lot of trucks going by all that and Angela and I had discussed maybe starting to do the podcast early in the morning in some off hours when things are more quiet and this actually seems very quiet and uh, also um, as will happen sometimes, I was laying in bed and I think about our people a lot, all the time as a matter of fact, and what can be done to help us, again, to get off this plantation, to get away from and to separate from those who would oppress us and cause us pain and misery as they have from the time that they dragged us to American shores and chains um, until today and continue to do so plus worldwide. So anyway, um, as you have probably noticed, Angela and I, we don't do a lot of podcasting anymore. I don't do a lot of podcasting. I don't do a lot of uh, creating content or like social media or YouTube or whatever. I spend a lot of time writing. Um, and I mean a lot of time writing. Uh, Angela also is doing a lot of writing. She's doing a lot of research. Uh, we bought, we belong to a black writers group here. And our goal is to create content for our people, just as Anjali wrote uh, This Black and Furnace of Affliction, and she's working on her uh, sequel to This Black. There's, there's a growing consensus, I think, of black people who have this, who, who, who want to see a vision of what we're about that's by us and for us and by people who genuinely love us. Um, the whole social media thing, um, I don't know if the term would be that I'm disillusioned by it. Um, I don't know if that's necessarily the case, but I do know that there's just um, way too much foolishness that goes on for my taste. There's too much phoniness, uh, too much of people presenting themselves to be things that they know that they aren't. And even uh, when it comes to things like this, um, this fake gender war uh, and, and divestment and all this, there are some people who genuinely, um, some of our people who genuinely like our divestors. There are some who are genuinely uh, passionate about whatever it is that they're talking about, even if I 100% disagree with them. There, there's a genuine passion. And then there are those who, and I consider even more, even more insidious, who don't even believe their own bullshit. They know that what they're doing is an act and that they're an actor or actress playing a role and causing um, discord among our people 
and they're doing it for fame or money or both. And it's completely destructive. And what they do is they tap into, like, especially when it comes to this quote unquote gender war. You have, you know, I've seen clips that Water Sniper has done, uh, you know, put on his channel of divestors or, or men hating black women or black hating, uh, black woman hating men, black men and so on, who, well, well, especially when it comes to this whole thing of uh, black babies and uh, black male children. And talking about you know black men, black male children should be aborted. You know all this, all this absolute craziness. And what's happening is that you have these people who, like I said, for fame or for money or for both, are tapping into the hurt that. Uh, black women, I'll speak about black women, and then I'll speak about black men, that black women feel or have suffered at the hands of black men and they they start talking about how well, you have all these black men killing black women and so on and so forth, totally ignoring the fact that through the military industrial complex, through the prison industrial complex, chemical warfare, drone strikes and so on, you have white men murdering black women, murdering black girls and black boys and innocent black men. But if you want to just talk about the murder of black women, you have a, you have entire countries of white men killing black women by the millions, by the millions. And this is ignored because they, because you want to point at some street level black folks that's doing stuff and hurt your hurt your feelings or made you feel bad or you have bad relationships and you're totally willing to ignore a people who have literally destroyed the freaking planet. It's madness. It is madness. And when it comes to black men talking about black women. You are dealing with, uh, you're dealing with people who, once again, are more willing to deal with a race of people who are responsible for the destruction of a planet than some street level black women who hurt your little itty bitty feelings and you, and you're feeling whatever way about it. And, <clears throat> And willing to look at these like few people who have zero power, who have zero power and not examining why we are the way that we are. And you're also willing to turn to, uh, to, to turn to women. And I'm talking about black men who are willing to divest and turn to white women who historically, who, who historically they're great great grandparents or their great grandparents might have lynched your grandpeople and this is who you who you want to run into the arms of as opposed to healing with your own men and with your own women it is absolute madness the people who perpetuate it um, are are doing so for their for their own rewards and uh, again, like what I feel is so insidious about a lot of it is that they don't even believe their bullshit. I'm always, I'm always thinking about, or when I hear about people talking about Candace Owens and, and so on. My my issue with Candace Owens isn't even so much what she says as the as the fact that I know that she doesn't even believe her own bullshit. She found a hustle. And she's doing that hustle to death. And when we talk about her, we talk about her as if she's sincere and actually means what she's saying. Or or, or, or actually thinks and believes the things that she's saying. She doesn't believe that stuff anymore than I do. 
She just she has found her hustle and she's doing her hustle to death. And that's what makes it far more insidious to me. It's it's um like when uh, when we when we discuss Jesse Lee Peterson. Jesse Lee Peterson, I don't agree with pretty much anything that comes out of his mouth. But what I do say about Jesse Lee Peterson is that as far as I'm concerned, I I believe that he actually believes his bullshit. And that is what causes me to give him a pass, as it were, is because I believe that he actually he actually believes it. I disagree with it. He's wrong as he can be, but I but he but he actually believes it, as opposed to a Candace Owens who says all this crap and does all this crap, and she she knows she doesn't believe it. It's just like these. It's just like these people who push this divestment and all this. They don't believe that shit. They don't believe it. But they say it because it's their hustle. We... I would like to see our people separate. My whole message is about separating. No, No more begging... You know, please, please stop getting us down in the street. Oh, please uh, treat us equally. Oh, please give us a chance. Please stop begging. Stop begging these people because, as I said on the uh, last podcast, who are you talking to? Who are you talking to? They set this system up a very specific way. Um, I'm one who I, I listen to Neely Fuller religiously and I, I I agree with like 99% of what he has to say about and the, if these people have set up a system it is a system of white supremacy that's not saying that white people are, are right or that they're actually better or anything like that but within this context within this system they are supreme and you can go around all day long saying that they're not. They are. Within the context of this system. Because it's a system they created to buttress themselves and to protect themselves. And it's, it's, it's an odd thing to me. That our people will keep going to them basically saying, tear down the system that has you on top so that I can have a chance. Why in the F, I'm not going to swear, why in the F would they do that? And to this moment, no one has adequately answered that for me. Why would they do that? Why would you, Why would I tear down a system that I built to, 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 to keep me on top and then uh, tear it all down just because you're asking me to or begging me to or quote unquote demanding that I do Dem- how do you make a how do you make a demand within a system in which you have zero power zero it's it it is it's such it's such madness to me that um I I have a hard time understanding any of it, and I mean, I mean, on on the part of our people, I have a hard, hard time understanding where our heads are at. When I hear uh, when I hear groups of our people talking about we're going to take back what's ours, what take back what's ours? What what exactly is that? Ours? What 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 is that? What you want to take back is land that someone came and stole from someone else. So I, I, I go and I, I go and run up in someone's home and take over their house and then run up two blocks down the street and kidnap your family to take care of uh, to, to take care of the house that I just stole from these people. Right. And then five years later, a few generations later, um, 
your 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 progeny are demanding that I give you part that I give you part of what I stole. And we're gonna take back what's ours. What what are you effing talking about? What are you talking about? Is it is it, 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 it's none of it theirs and none of it is ours. It doesn't make any sense. It's um there's there's this there's this whole thing among our people where we want to feel powerful. We want to feel like we have some kind of authority or but and within the context of this system we have zero power. The only power we have is outside of this system. Now I still exist with my wife within this system. But we look at things, excuse me, we look at things in terms of proximity. We got the heck out of ground zero, away from ground zero. And being away from ground zero makes it so that you can catch your breath and you can slowly just keep breaking the breaking ties getting further and further away from it and the further and further away you get from it the more power you get because it's not because your power isn't based any place within their system and that is that's the secret that's the only way to get power that's the only way to get your freedom safety security and sanity like right now, uh, like I said, it's four thirty in the morning. I could get, I could just like walk out this door and and uh, I could walk walk up the road and walk back home and so. And it's dark outside, and I feel I, I feel about as safe as I can feel. My, my the only thing, <laughs> the only thing I worry about is some animal coming uh, coming after me. I, I mean, like four legged animal. Um, not not these two legged pink ones. So, and, and and if I saw a cop, I wouldn't be scared. Um, they say cops are the same all over the world. Uh, that's not that's not necessarily true. White cops are the same all over the world. Um, but yeah, when I see when I see cops here, I'm like. I, I'm not afraid. I'm not feeling like I'm getting ready to get gunned down or harassed or that they're watching me or anything like that. I just I just see them out and keep on, you know, keep it pushing. But um, our power rests in getting free, getting free from their like I said on the other podcast, getting free uh, spiritually, getting free financially, getting free uh, medically. It's, it's more than a notion. I know everybody can't just pick up and leave. Um, I do know, you know, my wife and I are, are rich by any stretch. And I mean, we are not rich. We are not we, we 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 not we're not well off, but we know that we had a desire to get free and to get loose, and everything that we do is toward that goal and getting loose and staying loose uh, away from these demons. Uh, I. Uh, I don't know. I, I I talk to our people about it as often as I can. Like I said, I spend all my time writing now. And I'm hoping that through the website, Doia Media, through, uh, you know, I, I, I plan to maybe start doing some more, doing more videos again, doing more podcasts, maybe even live every now and then. Um, but just mostly through writing 
I'm hoping to at least touch some of our people. I, I am under no illusion that we'll all come together as one people because we're, we're too fragmented and it's not our fault. That's one thing that I always want to um, make sure that people know that I know. It's not, it's not our fault that we're in the condition we're in. It's, it's through this system. And uh, I, I think sometimes about the, uh, those of us who quote unquote make it. And if you even think of, if you even think in terms of what it means when people like our people talk about uh, quote unquote making it or uh, catching the brass ring or being um, um, free or whatever. It's usually in terms of financial freedom. Now, when you put it in those terms, then you're still on the white man's square because everything about them is about money and, material, and materialism. That's where they get their clout. That's where they, uh, you know, have people look up to them. That's it. because it is not based on character. It's not based on morals. It's not based on doing things worldwide that actually help anybody or help anything. And when it is so-called help, you also have to look at it like this. Everything that they have, they stole. And so when they're, when they're quote unquote generously helping poor black people or poor, um, people in different countries and so on, it's because they stole every, every, everything from them anyway. It's like they steal a million, a million dollars from you and then see you starving and give you ten dollars. And you're like, oh, oh, thank you. Thank you, thank you. You, 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 you're so generous. You've helped me. Or even if they give you a thousand dollars, oh, you're you're being so generous. Yeah, I, yeah, I can afford to be generous. I'm giving you a thousand dollars back of the million of yours that I stole from you. And that's the way that they do it. That's the way that they do it. And like I said, whether it's people in in the government or you know, you got you got Bezos building this this freaking ungodly yacht and all this different, and people look at them, and yeah, they 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 talk bad about them, but the truth is, especially when it comes to white people and 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 a lot of black people, they they look at them, and even though they dog out these millions, there they wish they were them. They want to be them. They aspire to be them. And to be in their position and have their money and their power. And that's just the truth of it. And so, like I said, if you have no moral compass, if you have no virtue about you, no, no real virtue or anything, you cover it up as white people have. You cover it up with money. You cover it up with affluence. You cover it up with a big car. You cover it up with a big house. That's why, that's why a whole lot of them, most of them, are in debt up to their ears. Is because it's all about, it's all about, um, um, portraying this image or projecting this image. Because as a person, they ain't shit. And that's just, and that's just them. And they know they ain't shit. So that's why they created a system built around them that's built upon money and built upon materialism and then tricked the rest of the world into thinking that that's what you need to be chasing after. Shoot. Where, where I am, it's, this, is, this is such humble living and I, I, I love it so much. Oh my God. God, I, I, I love it. I absolutely love where I am, um, and 
how Angela and I live. We we only we, we don't even have a car here. We don't need we don't need one. It's everything that we need. Everything we need we can pick off of a freaking tree. That's not that that's not really literally true. But I'm just it's, it's kind of it's kind of like that. And it's not about it's not about a whole bunch of money. And yeah, you gotta pay rent, you gotta, you know, buy food at different times or what but it's not it's not about the money. It's about being free and having some peace. It's about having some peace. Um I I often think about how our people are caught up in this whole caught up in this whole thing and it's like we don't really even realize that we're in this that we're in this cycle and what we're caught up in. Those of us who are quote unquote successful look at the system and say, well, uh, well, I'm successful and I'm doing I'm doing great. I have, uh, you know, I have stellar credit and I have this big car and this big house and uh, and whatever. And you're on the white man's square. And also not realizing that they have to let some of us, uh, they have to let some of us through or none of us would play. It's, it's, it's always back to my casino analogy. If you go in the casino and all the games are fixed in there and you and nobody ever wins ever, everybody's going to leave. You have to let somebody win every now and then. But ultimately, the house always wins. But every now and then, you got to let somebody win and when someone hits the jackpot all these bells and whistles go off and it makes it so that it calls attention to people who just hit the jackpot and the psychology of that is to make other people look and say well if they hit the jackpot then I can hit the jackpot too I'll keep putting my money in until I'm effing broke and that's what that's what it is when you see black people who are quote unquote successful. Um, it's so that we can look at them and say, "Well, they hit the jackpot. I can hit the jackpot too." All the games are fixed. The whole system is rigged, and it's designed to keep you in it, as opposed to saying, "Yeah, this whole thing is fixed. I'm getting out of here." And taking my whatever with me. So anyway, I'm I'm more or less rambling again. This is uh, this is kind of a test for today. Uh, early in the morning is probably let's see. I've been on here about twenty eight minutes. It says so. Uh, I've been I've been on here long enough because again I I don't really have a focus. It's 4.30 in the morning. Well, it's closer to 5 now. Well, I was just testing to see if uh, there's a quiet time, a best time that we can do the podcast. I think I might have hit it. I'll be letting Angela hear it today. Uh, I'll probably post with this within the next uh, hour or so. But I just, wanted, I just want to tell my people that... Um, me, Angela, we have a genuine love and concern for our people. Genuine, deep. Uh, you you see my uh, you see my my numbers as far as subscribers, whatever. It's been that way for it's been that way for years. It it got that way and stuck that way way before I stopped producing content, and it's because we don't talk the the party line of trying to somehow integrate into these devils we're all about separating from them and also 
just uh, just as with Psycho, just as with uh, Ajali and Pr- <sighs> being pro black, being genuinely truly pro black does not pay. It doesn't pay, and it doesn't get you a bunch of popularity. If you want to know whether somebody is really pro black or not. Uh, look at their look at their numbers. If they don't have a whole bunch of subscribers or people following or whatever, then they're probably really pro black and about our people. But if it's a bunch of a bunch of foolishness and stuff that's uh, gonna harm our people, or what the numbers will explode every single time. So anyway. I've spoken enough. I really thank you for taking the time to stop by and listen. Um, that's a, that's about it. This uh, test, I think, went pretty well. And uh, I'll be talking to you again soon. So thank you for listening to this edition of the this nighttime edition or early morning edition of the Drake the Maniac podcast. This is Ayako Yapa. The HDIC self appointed. That is the head drape domaniac in charge. And as always, wishing you peace and blessings, sanity, safety, and security through separation. And as always, I'll see you on the run. And thank you again for listening to the Drape Domaniac podcast. Tune in next week at doiamedia.com. D O E A I A M E D I A dot C O M. And again, we'll catch you on the run. Peace.